Hello and welcome back to Dev with Sev. I'm Sev the Dev, and today we will be adding one more system for ranged attacks to our character, and then we will refactor some of our character's attributes into its own script which our player and enemy will then inherit from. For our attacking systems, typically you would implement some conditions that prevent you from performing a ranged and melee attack at the same time, or you could separate ranged characters from melee characters entirely. For now, we will make our attacks in the same character and worry about fine-tuning the behavior later in the series. To get started with shooting, we'll have to add a ranged origin like we did with melee attacks to our character. We'll create a new empty, name it ranged origin, and we'll notice that it's actually facing the wrong direction. We need to flip the rotation on the y-axis by 180 degrees, and then we can place it to where we want the projectile to spawn. Now we are going to make our projectile prefab. We can go back to the scene and click Create, 2D Object, Sprite, and we'll name it Projectile. We also want to zero out the position. And we can add a Rigid Body 2D, and a Circle Collider 2D. Let's drag our projectile object into our prefabs folder now and open it up. Now we want to choose a sprite for our projectile. I'm going to use the knob sprite. And we'll notice the bounds of the collider aren't actually around the knob. So we could either edit the collider, but I'm just going to remove this component and add it again. And you should see that it wraps around this sprite. We also want to set our gravity scale to zero and freeze our Z rotation. And lastly, we'll need to set collision detection from discrete to continuous. We also want to make sure that the is trigger box is selected in the circle collider. Now let's go ahead and open up our player script to implement ranged attacking. We're going to make a new private function called handle ranged attack like we do for handle melee attack. Now we can set up the variables we will need. First we're going to need a ranged attack key. So we'll do public key code ranged attack key and we'll set it to mouse one which is right click. We'll also need a ranged attack origin, transform, and we'll also need a reference to the projectile itself. We'll also need a flag to check if we're attempting to ranged attack. So that will be private bool attempt ranged attack. And we'll also need a float, a private float, time until ranged readied. Now in get input, we can set attempt ranged attack is equal to input dot get key down ranged attack key. Now before I forget, we also need a public float for our ranged attack delay. And we'll set it to 0 0.3. Now we can implement our ranged attack. And the checks will be similar to that of the melee attack, so let's copy that over. We'll get rid of the actual melee attack logic. And we're going to log, we're attempting to ranged attack. Let's also change these variables from melee to ranged.
and we're going to set time until ranged ready to our ranged attack delay. Now we can add our handle ranged attack to our update function. Now if we go back into the editor and let it load, and then click play. Now if we right click, we should be able to see that our attempting ranged attack log is in the console. Now let's go back into our script and actually instantiate the projectile. Below the log, we'll do instantiate. And we're going to pass it our projectile. And then the ranged attack origin dot position. And then our ranged attack origin dot rotation. Back in the editor. We need to open up our character prefab and scroll down to the player script and attach our ranged origin to the transform and then drag our projectile prefab into the projectile game object. Now if we save that and click play, if we were to right click, we should see that we're spawning a projectile. It's not moving yet because we haven't added logic to our projectile, so let's go ahead and do that. Now for our projectile logic, we'll need a C-sharp script. So go to source, create, C-sharp script, name it projectile. Go ahead and open up the projectile prefab after it's done loading. And add that script onto the projectile. And then we can right click and edit script. And it'll load Visual Studio for us. Now we need to add some properties to our projectile. We'll start with a public rigid body so we can adjust its physics. Rigid body 2D. We'll name it RB2D. We'll also need a public float. And that will be for the speed of the projectile. And we'll just set that to 15 for now. Then we'll need a public float for damage. That's how much damage the actual projectile will do. We'll set that to 0.5 for now. And we'll need a public float delay seconds for how long we are going to delay the call. And then we'll need a private wait for seconds. And we'll call that our call delay. In start, we want to set our rigidbody 2D's velocity to our transform.right, because that's where the horizontal axis is pointing, times speed. All right, now if we go back into the editor and let it load, and before we press play, let's go ahead and open our projectile, find rigidbody 2D, and drag that component into that field. Now if we go back to the scene and click play, you see all that projectile that was still in our scene flew to the right. Now if we shoot, we should see our projectile fly to the right, and if we rotate, it'll fly to the left. Now we need to determine what happens when the projectile hits a character. So back in our script, we're going to go ahead and add a new function called void on trigger enter 2d and we're going to pass it a collider 2d and name it collider now the first thing we want to check is if they're on the enemy layer so if collider dot game object dot layer is equal to 8, because that's the layer we set enemy to. Then we're going to make our I damageable object here, called enemy attributes, and set that to collider.getComponent 
I damageable. Now we check if enemy attributes is null. And if it's not, we want to apply damage. By passing it our damage value. And at the end of that, we actually want to destroy our projectile so it doesn't keep flying. We can do that with game object dot set active false. And to be safe, we'll also destroy the game object. Now to prevent our projectiles from flying endlessly if they miss a collider or an enemy, we're going to make a private I enumerator function. And we're going to name that delayed call. And the first thing we're going to do is yield return our call delay. And after the yield, we're going to set our game object to false and destroy it. Now in start, we need to initialize our call delay, so we actually have a, a time to delay by. So call delay equals new, wait for seconds, and we're going to pass it our delay seconds. And then we're going to start the delayed call coroutine. Now if we go back into the editor and let it load, we can actually delete our projectile from the scene. Now if we press play, if we shoot, we should see the projectile clone spawn here. And after the delay, it deletes itself. And our delay is set to 3 seconds, so after 3 seconds, the clone should delete itself. Now the last thing we are going to do before we set up our animations is refactor our existing code so that our player and enemy both inherit some common data members from a parent character script. Let's go to source and create a new c -sharp script and we'll name it character. Go ahead and open that up. Now we're going to set up the variables that we're moving from enemy and player into this script. So firstly, we're going to need a public float, and that'll be our health pool, and that was set to 10. And we'll also need our movement variables, so public float speed, public float jump force, and a public float for grounded leeway. We are also going to need our rigid body 2D in our current health. Private rigid body 2D. And a private float for our current health. In start, we're going to initialize our current health to our health pool. Now we're going to move the check grounded function out of player. And we're going to place it in character. And change private to protected. And now we're going to move the die method from enemy and place it in the character. And we're also going to change private to protected. We're also going to add the virtual keyword to the die method so we can re-implement this function in our children classes but still have this base functionality for our character. 
Now we're going to make some accessors for our rigid body and our current health so we can reference it in other scripts. So we'll say public rigid body 2D and RB2D with a capital R. And we'll say get return RB2D. And then we will have a protected set. And we'll say RB2D equals value. Now we can copy this. And we'll change rigid body 2D to float. And change the name to current health with a capital C. And we'll be returning current health. And we'll be setting current health to value. And this will also be in a protected set. Now in our enemy, we can go ahead and get rid of all of this at the top. We want to make sure we keep apply damage in there. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we are now going to be inheriting from character. And we also need to switch out these current health variables with our public getters from character, which would be current health with a capital C. Now in the player script, we can go ahead and remove our movement variables. And we are also going to be inheriting from character. And now let's also inherit from I damageable, since our player should be damageable as well. And if we go to the enemy and copy this function, we can implement it at the very bottom. And that error should go away since we're now implementing it. And if we scroll through here, we should make sure that none of our variables need adjusting. Okay, it looks like we're using all the variables from our character script now. We are inheriting from idamageable here instead of in character because we are assuming that we want some passive characters as well as some characters that can be damaged, like enemies and players. And that should about wrap up the refactor. Let's go ahead and go into the editor and let it load, and then click play to make sure everything is working and nothing got disconnected. So if I click into the game, we can see that we are still melee attacking, and we can still shoot our projectiles. Jumping and rotating has no problems. Let's make sure we can kill the enemy. All right. And they're dead. Perfect. That's going to conclude this video. Now we are almost done with our character systems, and in the next video, we'll set up animations for our characters so we can see our code in action. Please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions down below. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sev the Dev, and I will see you all in the next one.